We are working on polynomial division. In the first video, we reviewed everything that we needed to review, including why we need to divide polynomials in the first place and why our factoring technique does not always work. And so now let's actually get into what polynomial division looks like. So I have an example here. We want to use long division to divide my first polynomial by my second polynomial. Remember, my first polynomial is the one that goes inside my box or inside my chicken coop. So that's x cubed plus 2x squared minus 5x minus 6. And our second polynomial, the one that's behind the division symbol, that's the one that goes outside my box, x minus 1. Some students have the tendency to think it's the larger one that goes inside the box, which is usually the case, but not always. So the first one goes inside the box and the outs one, and the last one is the one that you're dividing by. Now this process mimics the process that we did with just numbers in our long division. And so it mimics the example that we did in the last video. So let's repeat that process here. What we need to do is we need to figure out how many times x goes into x cubed. So x times what gives me x cubed? So x times x squared gives me x cubed. Now I'm not going to put it over here, and the reason is because I have two digits here. I need to keep things right aligned. So I'm going to right align it with my two digits there. So it's like me putting a zero in this place here and then my x squared there. So you need to keep things right aligned so you know that everything is lined up correctly. Okay, so now since we know where to put it and what specifically to multiply it by, we actually do the multiplication. We are going to take everything over here and multiply it by this x squared. So first, x times x squared gives me x cubed, and that's why we picked x squared in the first place. And then second, a negative 1 times this x squared gives me a negative x squared. So that's how we figure out what goes here. We multiply everything on the outside by our number up top. So now what we do is the same thing that we did in the process back here. We subtracted our two values. So that's what we're going to do. But be very careful because we are subtracting everything in this unit here. So instead of writing it as a subtraction, what I do is I distribute my negative through. So I make this into a plus, like a plus negative, make this into a subtraction, and make that into addition to change my signs. So instead of me actually subtracting it, I switch my signs and I add it. It's a little bit easier that way. So that way we don't get any signs lost in the process. So now let me do the subtraction. My x cubed minus x cubed cancels out, and it should. That's the whole process that we're trying to mimic here. And then I have 2x squared plus x squared gives me a 3x squared. I bring down my next digit, and I repeat the process from here. So first, x times what gives me a 3x squared? And x times a positive 3x gives me a 3x squared. So now I need to do that multiplication. Remember, you multiply everything here by this up there. So x times 3x gives me a 3x squared. A negative 1 times 3x gives me a negative 3x. So what I need to do now is I need to subtract. I need to subtract the whole guy here. So what I do instead is I distribute my negative, and I add. So my 3x squareds cancel out, and they should. That's the whole point of this process. So I have negative 5x plus 3x gives me a negative 2x. I bring down my next digit, a minus 6, and I start over. So x times what gives me a negative 2x. x times a negative 2 gives me a negative 2x. So I take everything here times this negative 2. x times negative 2 gives me negative 2x, and negative 1 times negative 2 gives me a positive 2. I subtract, or I switch my signs, 
and I add. My negative 2x's cancel out, and so I'm left with negative 6 minus 2, which gives me a negative 8. So this problem, I'm left with a remainder. And that's fine when we're just trying to do polynomial division. So now you need to pay attention to how the problem specifically asks for the answer. Does it just ask you to long divide? If so, it wants to know what your answer is. So my answer then is the quotient up top, which is x squared plus 3x minus 2. But we also need to include our remainder. So the way that we do that is we typically put the remainder over the divisor, over x minus 1. So if it specifically asks for the long division, then this would be your answer here. But let me talk about a different way it could ask it. If it wanted to know how to check this, we would mimic the check process that we did here. We took our divisor times our quotient. If we had a remainder, we would put it in here. And when we combine all those together, that would give us our starting piece here. So another way that we could write this is our starting piece, which happens to be x cubed plus 2, x squared minus 5, x minus 6. That is equal to our divisor, which was x minus 1, times our answer, or our quotient, which is x squared plus 3x minus 2, plus our remainder. So in this case, it's minus 8. So if we did all the math behind this and multiplied this out and simplified it, that should be what we have over here. So that's a way to check your answer with this. Okay, I have another example of using long division. Since I've shown you one example before, I suggest that you pause the video and see if you can work this one on your own. Okay, the process is the same, so let's see if we can work through it a little faster. My first polynomial goes inside my box, and my divisor of x plus 3 goes outside my box. x times what gives me x cubed, and that was an x squared. Make sure I right align it. I have two digits here, so I right align it behind my second digit there. And then I multiply x squared times this. So x times x squared gives me x cubed. 3 times x squared gives me a 3x squared. Subtract, or I distribute my negative, and combine. So my x cubes cancel out, and 2x squared minus 3x squared gives me a negative x squared. Bring down my next digit of negative 5x and start over. X times what gives me a negative X squared. That's a negative X. And so I multiply all of this times my negative X. That gives me a negative X squared. And 3 times negative X gives me a negative 3X. Switch my signs, which is equivalent to subtracting. Combine my terms, so those cancel out. That gives me a negative 2X. When I bring down my next digit, I start over x times what gives me negative 2x? So negative 2. So x times negative 2 gives me negative 2x. And 3 times negative 2 gives me negative 6. Subtract or switch my signs and add. My 2x's cancel out. My 6's cancel out. So we're left with the remainder. So if it just purely asks for your long division, then our answer would be the quotient up here of x squared minus x minus 2. But let's also talk about how we could check this. We take the first polynomial, the one that we started out with, x cubed plus 2x squared minus 5x minus 6, and we can check to see if that's our divisor of x plus 3 times our quotient of x squared minus x minus 2 plus our remainder, well, the remainder is zero, so we really should just leave that part off. So we have our polynomial is equal to our divisor times our quotient. And this is definitely something that we're going to use to our advantage. 
but I'm gonna hold off on that for a moment because right now we're just focusing on the actual division. I will bring this back up when we get to the important parts of this section. So you see me check all three problems the same way. The one where we just did our long division with regular numbers, our actual long division example, and the example that we just did. So I, again, wrote the check out in all the same way. That's actually a formalized process. That process is called the division algorithm. And again, this is going to be one of our key details in the end of this section. And so when we get to it, we're gonna talk about this detail quite a few different times. What it says is if we have our starting polynomial, that's what I represented by here, my starting polynomial is equal to my D of X, where this is called my divisor, the number that we're dividing by, times my Q of X, which is the quotient or the answer when we do these long divisions, plus our R of X or our remainder if it doesn't come out evenly. So my original polynomial or my P of X goes here. What I divide it by, my divisor, a D of X goes there. My answer or my quotient, my Q of X goes here. And after we do the math, my remainder goes down here. So if we ever want to check the process, or again, whenever we use this to our advantage, the way we write this out is the original polynomial, P of X, is equal to my divisor, the number that we divide it by, times my quotient, or the answer, plus our leftovers, or our remainder. And so that's what we use these division algorithm for. All right, we've talked about long division, and now in the next example, we're gonna talk about a different way other than long division.